Good Sunday morning, everybody. Hope everybody's having a great weekend out there. Welcome back to another weather forecast here brought to you by Weather on the Go. If you guys have not subscribed to the YouTube channel down below, definitely press the subscribe button, guys, and like the video at the end. In this video, I will definitely be talking about the flash flooding potential as well as looking ahead to another major heat wave taking aim on the center of the country as we head into the middle of August and your full tropical weather update, including some interest here in the Atlantic Ocean here as well for some tropical weather as well. And looking ahead at the end of the the video to your fall weather forecast. I'm um, looking ahead for September, October, and into November for your weather forecast as well in this video. So welcome back everybody. Hope everybody's having a great weekend. Again, we are watching here a type of setup here, bringing the potential for some flash flooding, even some you know lower end severe weather across the Midwest here and the Ohio Valley over the next couple of days. What we're watching is actually a stationary boundary and kind of a you know slow moving cold front dropping southeast across the Western Great Lakes and the mid Mississippi Valley as we move through the next couple couple of days you can see that here um, and you can see there is actually you know a marginal risk here in a couple of areas you know kind of tied to this system as it moves to the south and east we got one with the monsoonal weather across south central Arizona another another marginal risk across eastern Colorado into far western Kansas and then the one you know marginal risk that's a little bit more tied to that you know moisture with that front will be across portions of north central Iowa southeastern Minnesota into far southwestern Wisconsin as we head into this afternoon mainly for damaging winds the hail threat and the tornado threat are actually pretty low. So looking at this here with the composite reflectivity using the NAM model, you can see um, complexes of showers and storms revolving right around that, you know, stationary boundary and that slow moving cold front as we head into early this afternoon. Some more back building to some of the precipitation, some heavy rainfall across southern Minnesota into northern Iowa as we head into the afternoon as well. Then we'll see a little bit of a lull in the action, but more convection, more thunderstorm activity will start to fire up from the front range of the Rockies, north and east through central Nebraska, southeastern portions of South Dakota, bringing the threat for some, you know, some smaller hail as well as some gusty winds, and then even you know the potential for some torrential rainfall with all the moisture out there during the late afternoon. Then that complex will start to grow in intensity as it pushes across that marginal risk zone across northern and central Iowa into southeastern Minnesota, southwestern Wisconsin. Some heavy rainfall will probably be the primary threat with some flash flooding, although we could see some gusty winds up to around 60 miles per hour, maybe some quarter size hail out of this as it continues to push to the east. Again, the tornado threat remains very low. And again, this is going into your early evening uh, time frame. And then this will start to you know lift up into portions of north central Wisconsin, bringing the threat for some heavy rainfall up into those areas, places like the Wisconsin Dells, Wisconsin Rapids, up toward the Rhinelander area, and eventually over toward Green Bay as we get toward the overnight hours into your Monday morning. But here's the precipitation, guys. Very heavy rainfall is expected across the Western Great Lakes during this period. Again, we could see rainfall amounts here uh, averaging around three to four inches here. Uh, maybe even some spots getting up to around six inches, a half a foot of rain across portions of northeastern Iowa, southwestern Wisconsin, maybe getting into northwestern Illinois as we head through the next you know, 12 to 24 hours. So we'll continue to watch this. And that is why the Weather Prediction Center has actually included a moderate risk for excessive rainfall and the potential for flash flooding, especially into southern and southeastern Wisconsin, the Milwaukee area, the Madison area, getting down toward Racine, Wisconsin. But then, you know, there is an expansive slight risk for some excessive rainfall getting down to Rockford, Illinois, mainly along and north of the I-80 corridor in Illinois and Iowa, um, getting into the Dubuque, Iowa area, Chicago, Illinois, and up toward Green Bay, and getting back toward Iowa City, Cedar Rapids, even some slight risk for some excessive rainfall getting into the front range of the Rockies from Denver all the way southward into northern New Mexico and then another spot down toward the Tucson area and the eastern side of the Phoenix metro area um, into portions of southeastern Arizona as well. Even a marginal risk extending across the Tennessee Valley up through portions there of the mid-Atlantic here as well as well as portions of northern Maine getting up into interior New England. So multiple areas we're seeing for potentially some excessive rainfall and flash flooding potential as we move through the day today. As we go into your Monday, though, as we get into early work week here, we're actually seeing that cold front finally start to move off to the south and east, still bringing the threat for some precipitation, maybe even some heavier rain across portions of eastern Illinois, northern Indiana, and portions of lower Michigan. So we'll continue to keep tabs on that. But yeah, we're not seeing much of a severe weather threat for your Monday afternoon or at all right now, but there could be a, mar you know, a marginal risk being added across parts of the Ohio Valley, as I see it potentially, as we get a little bit closer. We'll see what the Storm Prediction Center does. But looking again at the NAM 
a.m. model, we're seeing some, you know, scattered showers and storms right along that cold front across lower Michigan. Even the upper peninsula of Michigan seeing some scattered showers uh, with some rumbling of thunder activity, stuff, you know, stuff like that. Maybe some scattered showers over into portions of interior New England. As we get kind of toward that late Monday afternoon time frame, look at all the scattered showers and storms developing from New York State down through central Pennsylvania. But right along that cold front here from lower Michigan toward the Grand Rapids, Kalamazoo area, getting into Lansing, Michigan, down into Gary, Indiana, South Bend, Indiana, toward the Fort Wayne area, and then getting down toward the Champaign-Urbana area there into eastern Illinois. We could be seeing some scattered showers and storms, and one or two of these storms could become strong enough to produce some gusty winds of around 50 to 60 miles per hour, maybe some penny to quarter size hail potential as well as we kind of push through Monday afternoon. And then this will start to weaken in intensity as we lose that instability Monday evening. And we'll start to lose that coverage of storms as we head to the overnight areas. Uh, the overnight time frame here where we have more heavy rainfall across portions of Quebec, getting into northern Maine and potentially northern Vermont, New Hampshire, as we head toward the overnight hours into your Tuesday morning. Here's what you can expect for your precipitation totals here as we move through the next 12 to 24 hours from Monday here morning into your Tuesday morning. Again, pretty much some, you know, heavy rainfall setting up from Detroit back westward towards Lansing, Kalamazoo, Grand Rapids, getting down through portions of Fort Wayne, Gary, South Bend, Indiana into portions there of the lower Missouri Valley and, you know, southern Illinois. Some of these areas could be averaging around one to two inches of rain, although there could be a couple of areas that could have some, you know, overachievers getting up to around two and a half to perhaps three inches at most, especially especially as you get into northwestern Indiana there and into portions of southern lower Michigan as well. And that's why the Weather Prediction Center has a marginal risk across such a wide zone across portions there of the Ohio Valley, the Illinois Valley, getting into the lower Missouri Valley, including the Ozarks, and then getting all the way up here into portions of interior New England where they actually do have a slight risk for excessive rainfall across portions there of Maine, northern Vermont, New Hampshire, as well as another slight risk across northern portions of New Mexico, far southern Colorado as well, with a large marginal risk zone across those areas where that monsoon moisture will continue to you know move northward from western Mexico into the southwestern United States, providing some beneficial rainfall, perhaps even to central California as we kind of move into your Monday afternoon. Here's the temperatures as we head into this afternoon, guys. You can clearly see where that cold front is here to the south. We have temperatures well into the 90s and 100s to the north. Look at the refreshing temperatures across the Dakotas into portions of the Arrowhead of Minnesota. Yeah, widespread upper 60s to lower 70s. So definitely enjoy that weather. Take the dog for a walk. Definitely do your chores outside because, yeah, definitely some cooler weather as we move into your Sunday afternoon here today. Before the heat does come back, we do have, a, you know, a kind of a ridge starting to build back across the Pacific Northwest and into portions of the Northwestern Plains as we kind of move into early next week here, starting Monday, August 8th, um, with with even that cold front continuing to kind of slip down to the south here across the Ohio Valley and into portions of the Missouri Valley as we head into your Monday. Again, still 100 degrees in Dallas, Fort Worth, still 96 over there toward the Texarkana area. But again, um, some cooler weather trying to retreat its way back to the south as we move into your Monday afternoon. Looking a little longer range toward the middle of next week here, we're actually starting to see another ridge starting to take shape across portions of the Rockies. This will start a little bit, you know, uh, compact at first, but it'll really start to build and, you know, build eastward and start to enlarge itself as we kind of move toward the middle of next week. And the only reason why this is happening is we're having a trough, a pretty significant shortwave trough start to build across portions of the Pacific Northwest once again. And this will actually provide for a strengthening ridge across the middle of the country. And look at how it expands bands on Wednesday, August 10th, and even on Thursday, that really starts to maintain itself across the middle of the country here from the Rockies all the way through the central and southern plains. That ridge will be in, you know, in control across these areas as we get towards the middle of August with that shortwave trough really starting to amplify across the Pacific Northwest on up toward the Aleutian Islands there, um, you know, providing some cooler than normal temperatures from Alaska all the way down through British Columbia there in Canada and perhaps portions of Seattle, Portland, Oregon. Some of these areas could definitely be talking about some cooler than the normal temperatures as we head towards the middle and end of next week. Looking at the here, the temperatures at the surface, what this could look at, you know, what this could look like as we get toward the Tuesday, August 9th time frame. This is the European forecast model. You can see widespread temperatures in the 90s, all the way from the Dakotas down through portions there of the, you know, Texas and Oklahoma, um, even some lower 100s there as well. Some heat across portions of the Pacific Northwest, but watch how this starts to move eastward as we move toward Wednesday, uh, Wednesday August 10th, excuse me. And we're definitely going to see that start to, uh, expand a lot more in coverage with the 90s and even the hundreds out there from portions of Saskatchewan, 
portions of southern Alberta, all the way south and eastward across portions of Montana, the Dakotas, getting into Nebraska, western Iowa, all the way down into those areas into of the central and southern plains as well. Even parts of Florida, guys. Look at that from Jacksonville Beach all the way down to Miami Beach. Widespread mid to upper 90s there as well as we move towards that Thursday, August 11th time frame. And that does, you know, the Climate Prediction Center does a good job on their forecast. And again, this is the 6 to 10 day temperature outlook here from August 12th through the 16th. Likely, if not certainly above Above average across much of the center of the country here um, with the, you know, the ongoing monsoon. We definitely expect some below normal precipitation across the southwestern United States from Arizona up into portions there in Nevada and Utah. And even across portions there of the eastern United States from the Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley toward the east coast, expecting below normal uh, below normal temperatures as we get into as we get into that August 12th through the 16th time frame. Underneath that ridge, as it pushes to the east, we're going to expect below normal uh, precipitation favored, you know, you know, likely favored across the Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley, back westward toward the central and southern plains, even getting up toward the New England region as well. And that is some good news for some of us across, especially the Ohio Valley, where they've been saturated with some drenching rains lately. They definitely could use a you know, time period to start to dry out. And it looks like that time period will come, you know, August 12th through the 16th. So that would be some good news for some of these areas, while other areas to the west could definitely use some rain from North Texas all the way up into Kansas. Unfortunately, we're not going to be getting any of that as we get toward the middle of the month. But the monsoon season across portions of Utah and portions of Arizona, Nevada, the front range of the Rockies, all the way back perhaps to even, you know, central California will be going strong. Some strong transport of some, you know, low and mid-level moisture from the western portions of Mexico on up into the portions of the western and southwestern United States will be going strong as we move into this time frame. So we'll definitely continue to watch that. We'll also be, you know, continue to watch this as well along the northern and northeastern periphery of this ridge as it continues to push to the east. Uh, getting back into kind of a west-northwest and kind of northwesterly flow pattern here in the mid-levels of the atmosphere as we kind of get into the late portion of next week and really into next weekend and perhaps even the following week across portions of the upper Midwest down into the western Great Lakes and perhaps the Ohio Valley. And we really have to watch this because if any of these, you know, short waves start to kind of round this ridge and across portions of the north Northern Plains, the Upper Midwest, the Western Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, any of these places, we could be talking about some strong thunderstorms. Now, again, this is a little far out, so we'll continue to watch this again. It does favor northwesterly flow, of, you know, some pretty strong northwesterly flow, at least, you know, favored here on the European forecast model as we kind of get towards next weekend. So that will be something to watch as well. Um, we'll continue to keep our eyes on it. And it looks like the EPS, which is the ensemble to the European forecast model, is actually hinting at potentially some precipitation across the Western Great Lakes, upper, Miss, uh, you know, upper Midwest as we kind of get into the, you know, the late portion of the weekend, and especially here the early part of the following week, next week, um, for maybe a complex of storms that could develop. But again, too far out to know. Uh, but again, the potential pattern is there. The pattern recognition is there. So we'll continue to highlight this as we get a little bit closer. Now to your full tropical weather forecast. We're watching Tropical Depression 9E across portions of the eastern Pacific Basin. Even an area to the west there here shaded in yellow, um, we actually have a 20 to 30 percent chance potential of some, you know, development over the next five days. Um, but really kind of keeping an eye on this tropical uh, depression here, look likely to actually, you know, transition to a tropical storm status as we get here later on today, if not into early on Sunday, and maintain tropical storm status all the way through the middle of the week before dropping back to tropical depression status as we get towards late week as it kind of encounters some cooler waters and some you know strengthening wind shear but you can see that right here on the satellite guys some very small system here to the west of the Mexican coast and you can definitely can see that as it's kind of moving off to the north and west a lot of kind of messy convection across portions here of this you know the central Pacific toward the eastern Pacific basin here uh, to the east southeast of uh, the Hawaiian Islands again this has a 20 to 30 percent chance of development but I'm not really seeing too much organization out of that um, so we're not you know really expecting too much of that at this time. But there are some interests, guys. There are some interests now in the Atlantic Basin. We are actually seeing a 40 to perhaps a 50% chance of development across the southern Atlantic Basin, again, over the open waters now um, with a wave coming off of Africa, an open wave. We'll continue to watch over the next 48 to, you know, 72 hours or so. We're starting to see kind of the leading edge of this open wave start to move off the African coast now. Um, we'll continue to see how much moisture it can kind of gather and how much low-level spin it can have once it kind of moves off into some of these areas off 
off of the coast here of Africa. But we're actually seeing this. Look at the GFS forecast model here. Um, has a 1,009 millibar low pressure system with some decent moisture pushing off of portions of the western coast there of Africa as we kind of get into later um, this afternoon. But you can see as we get into even early next weekend here, Tuesday, August 9th, um, you know, a couple days later, you, you know, strengthens a little bit to a 1,005 millibar low, pretty, you know, pretty small system. Um, and again, still has that moisture component with it. And then as we kind of move into late, you know, late this coming week, late next week, uh, we're really starting to see the GFS go a little bit, you know, a little bit str uh, stronger with this system in the last couple of runs, you know, strengthening this to about a 998 millibar low and kind of turning it more to the west northwest. Um, um, again, it's kind of aiming it toward the Lesser Antilles, but maybe just to the northeast of there. Again, this is kind of far out, so we'll continue to watch it. Um, looking at the European forecast model, same type of theme. It kind of has that 1,010 millibar low pressure system on Sunday. Tracks it a little farther south. It has it turning a little more southwest, so it kind of has it digging a little farther um, to the west here as we get toward the early portion of next week, which actually has it a little bit closer to the Lesser Antilles as we get toward late next week uh, using the, you know, the European forecast model as well. And looking here at the you know the EPS, which is also the uh, European ensemble here, to see what the wind shear environment looks like. I, we like to use the ensembles to kind of take a mean of all this to kind of look at what we're seeing. Um, yeah, we're seeing some pretty small, you know areas of shear, but we're not saying it's strong shear or anything like that. There is some shear to the north of the system, potentially, that could drag some drier air into this, potentially, um, but really, where this thing could form could actually be in kind of an environment that is, you know, low wind shear, very warm waters, and actually, you know, a pretty favorable environment for this start to, you know, to develop. And what I mean by warm waters, you can see in the, you know, the oranges here, that's 25 degrees Celsius water temperatures, and if this thing can get toward the Lesser Antilles, yeah, it has plenty of fuel in the tank for the potential for some strengthening system. Um, if it gets into the Eastern Caribbean, uh, it could be game on for the potential of a strengthening system that could be a tropical storm or hurricane. So we'll continue to watch this, guys. Uh, do not press the panic button just yet. Again, we're just continuing to watch this. It's nothing to worry about right now. Again, we'll keep you posted on this. But right now, looking at climatology here from August 11th through the 20th, you can see these origin points are pretty abundant across the Southern Atlantic Basin, getting into portions of the Western Atlantic, the Caribbean and the Gulf. So we're really going to start to see more action here as we get toward the middle and end of August. Like we've been saying here, um, just wait a little longer and I promise you the tropical weather will be coming across portions of the Atlantic, the Caribbean and the Gulf rather soon. Turning our attention back to the La Nina, again, I've been showing this, you know, graphic several times. Um, again, very useful tool. You can see on the chart here, uh, the negative values are La Nina. The zero value here is actually Enso neutral, and the positive values are uh, the El Nino. We're in a La Nina. We're actually in a moderate La Nina right now. It actually has been strengthening over the last couple of weeks, and it continues to strengthen even today. It's actually strengthened to almost nearly a negative 0 0.7 um, La Nina index here. So, that's something we're going to continue to watch as this looks to potentially strengthen to a strong La Nina here in the next couple of weeks, if not into portions of early September. And again, that will kind of fuel the active hurricane season as we get a little bit farther along. But looking, guys, at your full full uh, your your full autumn or fall weather forecast as we kind of move through September, October, November, we'll take it a month at a time here and show you what you can expect along the mainland United States. Um, for September of this year, a uh, very warm September is expected across much of New England, getting into the Great Lakes in the Midwest. Again, and still probably pretty warm across Texas and portions of the western United States. Just generally the United States as a whole um, in September is going to be pretty warm. Looking at the precipitation, yeah, we can expect dry weather to continue. Unfortunately, for much of the central and southern plains, all the way up to the Dakotas, the Pacific Northwest, it actually looks like the active storm track for the most part in September will be across portions of southern Canada. We do have to watch for the you know, anomalies across the Gulf Coast, Florida, and the Carolinas here. We could be talking about some tropical weather again into September. It looks pretty active. We'll continue to watch that here in the Gulf Coast as well as the Western Atlantic. As we move into October, October also looks very interesting. We have a couple of features I'm watching here. We have very warm conditions across much of the eastern side of the country, mainly east of the Rockies. Again, we're going to be baking in the heat, I think, even in October. Anomalously warm temperatures. 
But for October, I almost have to, you know, worry a little bit with some of these cold fronts dropping out of Canada across portions of the Dakotas into the Central Plains. Some of these could be strong enough to send some, you know, interesting uh, setups for severe weather, I think, especially as we get toward the middle and late portion of October uh, with all the wind shear starting to return here in the fall. Again, we start to have all that wind energy. We'll continue to watch this, guys. October does look to set up to be a pretty active month for severe weather, I do think, across the Central Plains, getting eastward toward the Ohio Valley and parts of the Western Great Lakes, so we'll continue to watch that as well. Right now, it's showing below normal precipitation, but I do think here uh, the details are there for the potential for some outbreaks for severe weather as we get toward the middle and end of October, so we'll watch this. Again, uh, active uh, precipitation here across portions of the Pacific Northwest, Southwestern Canada, up toward Alberta, up, up toward the British Columbia, and again, very active Gulf into the Western Atlantic, I think, as well for the hurricane season potential as we move towards late October here as well. And then going into November, finally, we're seeing still some warm conditions from Texas westward, mainly west of the uh, west of the Rocky Mountains here, um, it's really actually west of the Mississippi River. Still some above normal you know, temperatures across portions of southeastern Canada, but not as strong as what they're seeing off in the western United States or western Canada in November. And we're still seeing that kind of anomaly for drier than normal conditions across the southeastern United States during this time. Again, we could be seeing some severe weather again in the Ohio Valley early on in November. So we'll continue to watch this here. I do think some of these cold fronts dropping down from the north and west could provide, you know, places like Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, West Virginia, southern Illinois with the potential for some outbreaks of severe weather even into portions of November. So we'll continue to watch this. It looks like the, you know, the hurricane season might slowly start to wind down in the Gulf and the western Atlantic during this period, but we still have to watch the Caribbean and the Southern Atlantic as we get towards the November time frame as well. Averaging all these three months out together, September, October, and November here of 2022, yeah, very warm conditions, anomalously warm across mainly the entire southern and southeastern Canadian provinces, as well as the entire U.S. as a whole for the most part. Looking at the, precipita uh, the precipitation side of things for September, October, and November of 2022, yeah, mainly just dry across much of the United States. On um, the southeast might be a little wetter, especially if we can get some robust rainfall, some tropical rains. We could be seeing above average precipitation across the Florida panhandle and then across portions there of western Florida, maybe in, uh, across portions of the Gulf Coast and of the Carolinas. We'll wait and see again. Um, even though it shows you know below normal precipitation, don't let it fool you guys. We could be seeing some heavy rainfall events and maybe even some severe weather across the middle of the country toward the Ohio Valley um, during these month time frames as well. Looking quickly again at the drought monitor, guys. Yeah, with all these warm conditions, it's no surprise that you know September, October, and November are you know trending pretty warm. It looks like a pretty warm fall, guys, overall. So if I had to you know uh, sh you know share my thoughts on the fall months, yeah, it looks pretty warm. It looks pretty active. Again, we're going to continue the severe weather potential. We're going to continue the heavy rainfall potential and some of these flooding events, unfortunately. Hopefully we can get some rainfall across portions there in Texas, up into Central Plains and the western United States, but it looks like you're more active again across the Ohio Valley, the Midwest and portions there of the Great Lakes and perhaps even the Southeast with some of those hurricane potentials, um, you know, tropical storms, trop you know, tropical depressions, hurricanes, all that stuff as we get towards, you know, October and November timeframe. So we'll continue to watch that, guys. Thank you guys for watching the video. I hope it is very informative for you you guys remember to like the video press thumbs up um, down below um, remember to you know leave any comments questions and you know concerns down below be able to answer those later on today and subscribe guys to the YouTube channel once we hit a thousand subscribers I will make a video for you guys for an appreciation as well as show my face on the live streams guys so that is the challenge again um, once I hit 1,000 subscribers I will be doing that here as well so thank you guys for watching have a great rest of your weekend out there and I'll see you in the next video